It is Thursday, November 5th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorges Dam update. We have three pieces of information to cover today, including a look at the live stream and the water level at the dam. Also, this wonderful comment courtesy of Marta Amans, which explains to us in detail why you should be worried about vibration at dams. We're also going to have a look at some of your comments about yesterday's spotlight video, and we have some new tweets. Let's hop into it. And a brief caveat before today's video, while researching for these reports, I come across information from various sources. Just because I decide to include a piece of information doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. I like to let you decide for yourself. Moving on. And I hope everybody's doing okay out there on this beautiful Thursday while we're still awaiting the election results. I think someday I'll look back and tell my grandchildren, you know, your granddaddy was alive when this election started. No, I'm just joking. I'm just getting ready to go FedEx and Abacus to make sure they can tally up these results. Okay, let's, let's get on with the live stream at the dam first. And everything seems to be operating okay with the spillway angle camera today. And now a look at the side angle camera. It's still buffering today. Moving on to the water level. The current water level at the Three Gorges Dam is 174.5 meters. The current inflow is not noted. And the current outflow is listed at 10,500 cubic meters per second. It is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. Over the past 24 hours, despite a few ups and downs, the water level at the Three Gorges Dam remains about the same. Upstream at Kuntan, the water level is up a bit. It was about 175.39 meters and currently sits at 175.56 meters. After yesterday's video, where we discussed the debris and how to possibly clean it up, Marta Amans was kind enough to leave us this follow-up comment, which provides us a lot of information and gives us many things to think about. I doubt we shall ever know all that much about the dam. What we do know is the 34 turbine generators, two generators are used to supply the dam operations only, generate an appreciable increase in vibration when all are turning. That vibration causes cavitation in the water, producing fine bubbles, and induces wear by erosion by the bubbles. But more than that, the mass of concrete structure dampens those vibrations as a whole within the system. The problem is the harmonics created by these vibrations, which can amplify their effect. As solid as concrete may seem to be, its structure is not like that of a solid piece of steel where we can, through heat treatments, arrange the molecules in a strict physical structure. Vibration encourages concrete to crack, and once any moisture enters those cracks, no matter how minute, it expands and contracts with the increase or decrease of the temperature gradient. Concrete also wicks up water. This is why on a concrete house foundation slab or perimeter pour, one must use treated lumber for the seals of the wood framing. It is not unusual for water to travel to the top of a two foot high perimeter foundation. Normal cracking is expected on the concrete surfaces over time. Now for the bad part. We have information that parts of the dam, not the entire structure, have moved downstream by several millimeters. Why would this be troubling? The movement induces an accelerated cracking in the concrete structure and the reports of inadequate steel reinforcement and placement. Normally the main cause of failure in a gravity design would be the movement of the base. Given that the base rests on a 30 degree upthrust east to west in height, and the layers of rock are of limestone, marlstone, and shale, all very porous rock and conductive to water channeling. The design called for the injection of a mortar or grout through large pipes driven into the rock at a 90 degree angle to the horizon to a depth of 100 feet or so. When you look at that operation during the construction, you can see these pipes, which had holes spaced evenly within them and were quite large in diameter. 
I would think that the driving of the pipe would have resulted in a great amount of subsurface fracturing, but the forcing of mortar or grout would infiltrate those fissures and cavities. This was done repeatedly to create a curtain or subsurface dam in the rock formation to stop any water infiltration. So far so good, but that will not keep water migration out of the deeper structures, nor will it stop the water migration between the base up to the subsurface dam. After all, what is the water pressure at a depth of 175 meters? A few individuals have reported seeing signs of cavitation on the two sides where the turbine banks are located. On the other hand, that may be nothing more than cavitation from the turbines. Finally, the question of what if the water level behind the dam rose to a height of greater than 186 meters. Would the increase in pressure of the water against the dam be enough to compromise it? For that, you would need to ask a civil or structural engineer, and he or she would need a wealth of information before answering. I honestly feel like I'm learning more from the commenters than I have from scouring Google for the past several months. Thanks again for sharing that with us, Marta. And if you happen to catch yesterday's video, we was discussing this spotlight or spider web on the camera at the dam, and a few of your comments were pretty interesting. The first one's courtesy of Al P. I'm sorry to disappoint people about the spotlight shining on the right hand side of the dam. The movement to me appears to be that of a leaf or insect stuck in a spider's web moving around in the wind. The image is out of focus due to being close to the camera's lens. And thanks for the comment, Al. Jim in Michigan also said, I think the spotlight is a spider web on the lens of the camera. Dale Bratcher said, yes, it looks like a little bug got caught. Ruthless Mindset had this to say, I'd agree with a spider web as it can be still seen after dawn. Thanks for the comment, Jim, Dale, and Ruthless. So the general consensus with that anomaly seems to be something on the camera, but we'll keep our eyes open for other strange things at the dam. And now on to a series of interesting tweets and information about the Yangtze River and Three Gorges Dam. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe.
and I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content.